The first issue is on the tape that was I watched yesterday afternoon. The court will allow the playing of the tape. I think that it's awful long. It seemed to me that, you know, playing a half hour of it would be better than playing the whole hour. There's a lot at the beginning that's not even the boy talking. Could I be heard on that part, Your Honor? Yeah. I watched. Of course, the prosecution made the motion towards the end of the day, and so I watched that thing in the middle of the night, basically, again to see what it looked like from the standpoint of playing it. And there's a tremendous amount of prejudicial material by way of police officers making statements that are absolutely inadmissible in court. On the other hand, to simply pick out, you know, s statements of Gavin in a vacuum that don't show that the police officer just said, you know, you're really brave, we want you to do this, you're doing the right thing, and all the other things that they were saying, you know, takes it out of context. I don't think that we're prepared. I don't think that people are prepared either to present a pared-down version, nor are we. Well, it should come to no surprise to you that Judge Melville ruled the videotape does come in, but he suggested the prosecution, per his comments you just heard, only use about 30 minutes of it. Now, does it sound like the defense plans to start this trial all over again? Now, with regard to the court's ruling that the tape is coming in in one fashion or another, we had indicated that we would need to then have Gavin made available. We'd also like to have Janet Dr. Katz, and Larry Feldman. For a moment, I thought you were going to say something else, but that's fine. Could you indicate what it is, and I'll add it to the list? <laughs> so we'd like to have them available, and I understand they were the people's witnesses and that they would have a number to call them. We tried to find a number for Dr. Katz to give him a heads up, and we didn't have one, so... All right. So I think that one of your people should call them right away this morning, right? Uh, yes, Your Honor, we'll do that. Uh, I want to tell the court that, first of all, we're not waiving any objection with regard to the materiality of whether it's appropriate. That's fine. Next, will the king of pop bear it all? Yeah. <laughs> all right. The next issue that we have is the motion to admit evidence concerning Jordan. Do you wish to be heard on that, Mr. Snedden? Uh, Mr. Zonin is going to handle that, Your Honor. Mr. Zonin? Your Honor, I think we've adequately stated our position in the pleadings. I can tell you that with regard to the relevance of that material, there was quite a bit of testimony that was presented during the course of the defense case about nothing untoward or inappropriate occurring in Michael Jackson's bedroom. And numerous witnesses who have testified to the fact that many children, particularly back in the 1993, 94, 92 period, who spent not just nights, but weeks and even months in Michael Jackson's bedroom, in Michael Jackson's bed, and it was a completely non-sexual event. The fact that this child was able to give a description of a unique feature of his anatomy that could not have been known by him except for a very intimate acquaintance with Mr. Jackson is a very good circumstantial evidence of the fact that the relationship between he and at least that child was something more than casual and something more than innocent. Now, in that regard, we'll submit unless you have questions. Okay, you got that. They want to have Michael Jackson's anatomy photographs come in to deal with the 1993 accuser allegation as we move on. The defense argues that a courtroom anatomy lesson indeed is not required. And the idea is, I think they've said in their pleadings, that this goes to the issue of whether or not Mr. Jackson was shy or modest. Now, that's not what Mr. Zonin just said when he got up here and argued. I think he shifted the argument a bit, if I'm not mistaken, and talked about things happening in the bedroom. They didn't offer, I mean, we can't just keep having a moving target here. They didn't offer it in their moving papers. They didn't offer it for that purpose. They offered it on the shy and modest purpose. So it would be 1101B evidence on kind of a collateral matter if it ever happened, but it didn't happen in this case in the defense. We went through and did a word search on the entire transcript, several different words, shy, modest, all sorts of things. We found one question that used the word shy, not even in this context. It had to do with whether or not a maid saw Mr. Jackson change his shirt. And the objection was sustained to that question. So it was never answered. So it didn't happen. 
what really they're trying to do, and I think that's what I heard Mr. Zonin just argue, is they're trying to argue this is 1108, and it doesn't meet the criteria for 1108. It doesn't meet the criteria the court set down, that it would be somebody directly observing something. So it would have the prejudicial effect of the jury considering it, obviously, for 1108 purposes, because it would be very shocking to see pictures of anatomical pictures and all that sort of thing.